to the Great Basin's seasonal outlook for October through January. Over the last 30 days, we've seen very warm temperatures across much of the West, and also wetter conditions over the southern two-thirds of the Great Basin, along with areas over eastern Idaho into Wyoming. We have had some wetter conditions with some showers and thunderstorms, along with higher humidity into parts of central and southwest Idaho into far northern Nevada, but this precipitation over the last 30 days has still averaged below normal. Since the beginning of the water year, October 1st, 2021, so over this last 12 months, we've seen generally drier conditions over parts of the Great Basin, but still wetter than normal conditions, or at least near normal precipitation over parts of the Sierra Front into eastern Nevada and the Arizona Strip and parts of Utah, which was largely attributed to the monsoon, and then also over parts of central and eastern Idaho. 10-hour fuel moisture as of September 30th is certainly low over southern and western areas of Nevada, where we've seen drier conditions more recently. However, is much higher over parts of Idaho into northern and central Utah and over into Wyoming, where we've had some wetter conditions along with cooler, contempor- cooler temperatures to close out September. 100-hour fuel moisture is are still showing really the same trend with the driest conditions in southern and western areas, but still on the dry side, even into parts of southern Idaho that haven't received as much precipitation. 1,000-hour fuel moistures are showing that same trend. ERCs have certainly seen some improvements over the last month. Up in Idaho and over western and northern Nevada, ERCs took a fairly big nosedive going into parts of September. However, over the last week have rebounded with drier conditions that have materialized over Idaho into western Nevada, at least at the end of September. However, we did see some shower activity and higher humidity, and that will carry over into the first part of October. So I expect these ERCs, especially in Idaho, to go down a little bit more uh, before they start to go up. Still are near to above normal into parts of these drier areas and generally below normal over the southern and eastern half of the Great Basin that has continued to see moisture. Looking at some of our fine fuels, we still have a very good fine fuel crop over parts of western Idaho into the Snake River Plain, where we saw some good spring precipitation. So those areas, along with some spotty areas over northwest Nevada that have some grass growth, at least some continuous grass growth and a little bit higher fuel loading in some areas. Those areas, as we go through the fall and see wind events move through the region, if we do see wind events after a dry period, these areas where we have the fine fuels that eventually go dormant will certainly be at risk of seeing fire spread when we see those windier conditions. Looking at soil moistures, really just generally near normal, a couple of drier spots into parts of Idaho or even northern Utah that has been kind of on the northern fringe of some of this deeper moisture, and also into parts of California, which which also push into the Sierra. Otherwise, higher fuel moistures over southern areas that have continued to see deeper moisture. The drought monitor looking at the drought conditions as of September 29th still show extreme drought and even some exceptional areas over parts of Utah, but the extreme drought is really over much of Utah into parts of Nevada, and we are seeing some improvements to the drought over far southern areas that have seen some of that deeper monsoon moisture in parts of the Arizona Strip. Also further north into Idaho, we are generally seeing moderate drought, but we are seeing some severe drought into far southern areas and also into parts of western Wyoming. Looking at the drought outlook, which takes us from October 1st through December 31st, we are basically seeing uh, the drought will persist or intensify over parts of Nevada and Utah and southern Idaho, and we should see some more dramatic improvements over parts of central Idaho as we go into the fall and into the winter months as we see a return of La Nina or a continuation, which could bring some additional above normal precipitation to northern areas. So kind of putting everything together, first we'll take a look at the La Nina-El Nino forecast. Currently we are in a state of La Nina, and it looks like that will continue here in the coming months going into the fall and into the early part of this winter. Could even intensify for a period of time during the early winter months. We are expecting some warming ocean temperatures as we move towards the spring and towards the fire season. So we may see another return of La Nina again this winter, and then we could see this La Nina weekend and we move into more neutral conditions going towards the summer. So what all this means, most of our impacts from La Nina or El Nino are felt in the winter time. So in the winter, what we typically see with La Nina, which is what we are expecting this winter, those wetter conditions up in the Pacific Northwest, 
colder conditions over towards Idaho. And again, these cold, wet conditions could clip parts of northern Nevada as well, with a more of a drier, warmer signature over southern areas of the Great Basin. Very similar to the pattern, pattern that we saw going into last winter and spring. Looking at the 8 to 14 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, this takes us from October 8th through the 14th, showing warm temperatures continuing over much of the Great Basin and generally drier conditions in the north, and any above normal precipitation would be confined to southern areas. Looking at the four month outlook from Predictive Services, again, October, really just warmer and possibly drier conditions overall, with the exception of the far south. As we move into November and December, we are expecting more of a wetter pattern to emerge from the Pacific Northwest into Idaho, especially into Wyoming, and then possibly as we get towards December, dipping down into the Four Corners area or the Rocky Mountain area. So again, we could see those wetter conditions also continuing through January in the north, still looking with La Nina setting in that drier signature continuing for southern areas. And then we'll see off and on cooler temperatures going through the winter months as storm systems move through the region. So putting everything together, we're just looking for normal fire potential from October through January, which is typically low fire activity across the Great Basin. The only exceptions will be in areas that we do see some above normal grass crop going into the winter months once that grass crop becomes dormant. And also with these fall cold fronts with the drier grasses, parts of the Snake River Plain and also parts of Northwest Nevada could see some fire spread if we see ignitions in those areas during dry periods and especially on windy days. Aside from that, we are expecting, again, low fire activity and generally either out of season or normal fire conditions. That concludes our seasonal outlook for this month. Check back at the beginning of November for our next outlook.